Hi and welcome. We're going to do a little bit of work on the Isle of Palms by Walter Carroll. It's from his group of pieces called In Southern Seas. It's the very first one. Before we do, here's a chord. Chord of D major. That is a triad. It has three notes to it. And we know we can have major triads if we lower the third. We can get a minor triad. And there are some other triads as well. When we add other notes to triads, they start to take on new, new colours, new flavourings, new seasoning. And one of the seasonings that Walter Carroll is using in this piece is the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would be a B. So instead of that, we have, and I always imagine that as being a very bright, happy, cheerful sound. Let's take another chord. Let's take the chord of A major. We're about to use it. Walter Carroll uses it too. Add the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. F. An F sharp because that's the sixth note of the scale of A major. In D, it's a B. Um, lovely colours, lovely bright sound. Let me give you an example. Um, ignore what I'm playing till the very end of this phrase. So it's a great ending chord. There we've got our added six there. Let's listen to that one more time. If I played it without the sixth, that would have given. It's, it's blander. Whereas with the sixth, more cheerfully. And the same works in minor, but I don't want to stress this too much. Where's the sixth there? The power of the sixth chord, and we're going to encounter that. The other thing I'd like to explore with you for a moment is six eight. What does that mean? Well, in time signatures like two four three four, and the oh so common four four, the number at the top is telling us how many beats there are in the bar. So let's take three four for example. One two three, and we can subdivide that. One two three, however we want to. But in 6-8, that 6 is telling us about those subdivisions, not about the main beat. I'll jump straight to it. In 6-8, there are two beats in the bar. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it is an example of compound time. Other ones being 9-8 and 12-8. If you know your three times table, things will be beginning to chime. So, a beat is represented by a dotted crotchet. Let's go. I'm going to play it through now, and then we'll go through it and discuss some of the things that are going on. So let's now slowly walk it through and have a look. Well, we've got 
got our D6 chord there, haven't we? And a bit of a lean towards that chord and less on that one. And no pedal for that opening phrase, nor for. But then add some pedal for that bar. Too fast for these semi quavers passages. And then the next few bars he's taking us down, down, down. Naturals are appearing, we're flattening things. And once you got to that chord, I would practice. Very nine, what's coming up? Just jumping from there, up an octave. Then I would practice moving that idea up an octave. And that will prepare me for the huge leap worked out. And although there are staccato dots there, we're still going to use the pedal. To create a lovely wash of C sharp minor. wash of F sharp minor. I notice we had a little triplet rhythm at the end there. Da 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 da. Which is picked up in the right hand. Da da. That's a very common rhythm in 6-8. Da 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 da. That sort of lilt feeling. Crotchet quaver. Da Da da, long, short, long. Oh, not a big gap there, I don't think. You could do, I suppose. I don't like it. <laughs> and we're going. To, we're slowing up there. And I'm going to make something of this left hand, turn it into a tune, which, which it is. And it starts with that E, doesn't it? I'll come to that in a minute. I've changed the fingering there a little bit from what's in my copy through to the end. Now this idea here, we're back to our sixth chords again. A major with a sixth. And in a moment we're going to have D major with a sixth. It's really tricky playing those double stops. So we've got two notes in parallel idea. We've, we've talked about this before. A way of practicing it might be to do this. Take the top note, hold it on. Am I comfortable doing that? How about with the E? Then the other way around. So hold on to one of the bottom notes and or you get the idea you can mix and match holding one and playing with the others you can create your own patterns out of that and uh, fortunately our a major triad feels much like our d so wherever you practice it your efforts will be translated into finding the D position, the other position, uh, easier to play as well. I 
and it's getting very calm and a little slower, we're told, and then retardando, getting even slower as we go through that section. So we're no no rush what, whatsoever. And lots of pedal. I'm actually releasing my pedal, just a little bit, half bit of half pedaling going on. Um, have a th it, we're ped pedal with your ears. You know, if, if you've got too much sound, just release the pedal a little bit. You could experiment with that. I think I was rushing a bit there. It's a very beautiful piece and I hope you enjoy studying it. Bye bye for now.